Hey guys, I am Doug with DE in the Garage. And I am Eric. Yes, he is. And this is a broken Jeep. All right, so I started up uh, yesterday when I get out of work and it starts violently shaking. Um, it had no power under like two grand. And if I floored it, I managed to limp it home. So there are a couple possibilities here. We're thinking bent valve, we're thinking shattered piston, which Foros are known for. But Eric has another idea something that happened to his Subaru. So back in, what, two years ago, I used to have an old legacy, and on our way home from the same job that we both used to have, it's actually true. same commute, my cat blew up. It went, it busted away from the casing and turned sideways, which created a lot of back pressure for my motor and made it misfire like crazy and lose all its power. So basically I came here, like Doug and I were just standing by, I'm like, you think it might be your cat? <laughs> so what we're gonna do is uh, run through a couple little things and see if we can't diagnose this 4.0 tonight. Oh yeah, that's, can you hear that? Actually, it's holding a somewhat steady idle. It is jumping around a little bit. So I don't know if you can hear that, but it sounds like a vile tapping coming from inside the motor. I think it might be a bent um, valve, but we're gonna try to do a few tests right now to find out uh, if maybe this is all just because of back pressure. All right, one of the first things you should always check whenever you have any issue with the vehicle is always the oil. Um, so what Eric's gonna do right now is pull the engine oil and we're checking for a few things. We're checking to see if there's metal shavings on it. We're checking to see if it's milky, which would be a sign of um, a, uh, let's see if I can't get you a good say. It's kind of dark out here. You can see the oil. I don't know if you can tell, but it doesn't look like there's any metal shavings and it definitely does not look like there's coolant in it, which is a good thing. It means the head gasket's not blown and uh, at least on the dipstick, there's not big chunks of some piston or something in there. Okay guys, so you can see it's got a misfire, something's not right. The next text I'm doing is I'm going to put my, take a rag and put it over the exhaust pipe to see how much pressure there is. So you do this, it should be able to blow my hand off after a couple minutes. And honestly, it's not that much pressure. So, I'm still leaning to sort something being clogged. Now you only can do this a couple times before it gets really hot in your hand. So be careful. Alright. Alright guys, sometimes you can tell when you have a bad catalytic converter is that the inside here, this is the casing to it, there's a bunch of high quality metals inside that basically filter out your exhaust to make it clean air. But the casing lets loose and if you hit it, with a hammer or your hand while it's cool, motor off, everything cold, because you can burn yourself really bad, you'll hear this rattle. Now there's no guarantee that that's going to be a true indication because it also can be clogged shut. Over time, a lot of carbon buildup, little deposits build up on this filter and it gets clogged shut. So basically with a 200,000 mile motor like Doug's, it might be completely sealed. So I'm just going to tap it with the hammer or my hand. We'll start with the hammer to see if it's loose. It sounds pretty solid to be honest like it might be clogged shut. You guys saw a few nights ago, I was having the problem where this Jeep was running real rough. I tried cutting the cat out. I thought that might be the issue. Uh, that was not it. Uh, the reason I don't think it's the pre-cats, the ones up on the Y-pipe, uh, is that it's only it's only throwing codes for misfires. And those are both, that those the cats on the Y-pipe on uh, four liter Jeep engines are uh, monitored by O2 sensors. So if there was something wrong with those, I'd be getting some O2 code, OBD2 codes, and that's not the case. So it's feeling more now like a tune-up issue, like it's not getting spark, it's not getting fuel. So what I'm gonna do is take off this coil rail here. I, uh, I picked one up in the junkyard today because I think my coil rail might have gone. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's dig into this. All right, y'all, so I pulled out three of the plugs from inside that motor. I don't know what you can tell, but they do have this white coating all over them. The electrodes are burned down, there's signs of fouling. Um, I don't know if this is what caused the issue or if this is a result of the issue but one thing's for sure i'm going to change out these plugs i have these plugs laying around they're from another vehicle i mean obviously they go to they're a different 4.0 they're the same plugs they're not brand new but they're a lot newer to give you a little comparison of the two 
Um, this is the one I just pulled out. This is the one I'm about to put in. Like I said, this one is not new, but it's newer. You can see uh, the gap is much smaller. That's where it's supposed to be on this one. I, I don't remember what it is on these things. Is it 0.45 or something? I don't remember, it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm gonna try to put these plugs in and try to put a new coil rail in. We'll see if that helps it at all, you know? All right, so I was out at the junkyard this morning just looking around. There's a 4.0 there with this bad boy on there. It looks brand new to me. I mean, you can see there's no dirt, there's no grease. My old one, I don't know if it was bad or not, but this is certainly an upgrade. I mean, it's clearly brand new. There's no rust on the metal inserts there. So we're gonna throw this in. I've got the sort of new plugs in and we'll see if maybe this doesn't fix our problem, you know? All right, guys, so here's the good news. I just got the new spark plugs in. I just got the new coil rail in and uh, the problem is solved. Uh, thing runs great. I mean, it's <laughs> still kind of a bucket. Got a real loose end and a valve tap, but at least it's back to being drivable. So here's what I think happened. Um, I think over time, my cat slowly started to clog, uh, and it slowly robbed me of horsepower, and I didn't even notice. I mean, this thing's got 204,000 miles. I just thought it was tired, you know? Um, I think the other day I hit critical mass. Maybe something broke loose or spun in the cat that uh, caused, you know, a complete blockage. Um, I continued to drive it because I was trying to make it home so I didn't have to call for a tow and with that extreme back pressure that was being built up um, it caused me to foul out my plugs um, it's a possibility that the coil rail was either going bad or went bad and that might have been what caused the um, the bad plugs in the first place you know I'm not sure which caused which either the bad cat caused the bad plugs or maybe the bad plugs caused the bad cat you know my coil rail went out started running um, you know inefficiently and, and it helped clog that cat prematurely whatever the case is um, in this case my symptoms were very very low power um, a wicked engine shake and misfires across all six cylinders in this case this cure was a new cat uh, new spark plugs and a new coil rail um, I don't think it's an uncommon thing um, you know for all vehicles definitely not these Jeep 4.0s but any vehicle that's running like that you know uh, no matter how complicated engines get, they still only need a few things. They need air, they need fuel, they need compression, and they need spark. You can throw all the computers in the world you want at them, but if it's an internal combustion engine, burning gas anyway, if you have all those things, uh, you will have a running motor, you know? It just is a matter of uh, making sure it's the same thing, whether you're fixing a lawnmower or you're fixing a race car, you know? Make sure it has those things and um, you're good to go. So if you're encountering an issue, low power, uh, inefficiency, try to figure those things out. Is the engine breathing? Can air get in? Can it get out? All right, is it getting spark? Is it getting fuel? Is there co um, uh, compression inside the cylinders, you know? It's not that hard to troubleshoot these issues, all right? Hope you guys like this video. Hope you found it informative. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and we will see you next time. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> hey, come over here. Okay, yep. <laughs> Are we recording?